Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. From RNA Music. That's right. Favorite mom and pop guitar shop and music lesson studio where we teach music to children's, chitlins, and grown ups. <laughs> Deep in the heart of Texas. We're at. And uh, welcome back. It's time for another Ask RNA. We're going to yeah. answer questions from people all over the world and places. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yes. Let's get to it. All right, welcome back to another Ask RNA. If you're a long term viewer, long term, long term viewer, long term, yes. long time, welcome back. Thank you uh -huh. guys so much. Go ahead, give it a little thumbsy uppy. Yay, right now, up. that kind of helps out all that stuff. Uh, if you're new here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you'll get notified of all of our new videos. Yes. Because you're going to like it. Pretty sure. 99% of you will. 1% won't, but that's fine. All right, uh, let's see. It's Ask RNA for answer questions. Uh, get the housekeeping. Housekeeping. Mm -hmm. Gonna get an RNA t shirt. Link's in the description. Go get you some swaggity swag. I saw that you can, we can have pop sockets now. If you want a little poppy thing on the back of your phone for holding your phone, apparently we can add those to our Teespring store. I haven't done that yet, but I probably will. <laughs> and then I'll get me one. Yeah. Why wouldn't I want my own label on nice. my phone? Nice. <laughs> All right, so check that out. Now we're going to go ahead and answer some questions. Awesome. Let's do this. Let's get to it. All right. First question oddly weird. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Like hey, Ryan, what would you charge a poor boy from North Carolina for a custom guitar strap? Mm -hmm. Hashtag wheelchair guitarist. Hashtag government checks. <laughs> Government checks coming in. Oh man, well, I don't know because I really don't have time at the moment to do any custom strap yeah. stuff because it's very time consuming. It's super time consuming. <clears throat> It'd be at least a hundred bucks, like minimum a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. And then, kind of depending on what you know you wanted, if it was like you know rivets and um, like hardware added to it, or if it's carved, like actual carved leather and hand dyed. So it'd be minimum of that. Yeah. But I, I can't, I can't promise I can do that right now because I just have too much with all of our lessons and taking care of our kiddos and writing lesson plans. It's like, I don't think I could carve out some time. See what I did there? <laughs> On the weekend or something <laughs> to do a strap. And I would have to go buy some more leather because I had a big hunk, just a big chunk of leather. Um, that I was kind of saving to do another strap or something. The cats destroyed it. The cats destroyed it. Yeah, the cats ruined it. There you go. It was in the garage and the yeah. cats ruined it. So I have to go buy a new like shoulder, um, a big chunk of leather. And that's pretty actually pricey. Now you can get several straps out of it and you know several wristbands and things, but go get one. And... So. Yeah, it'd be minimum 100 bucks, minimum, mm -hmm. plus, depending on how much labor was involved yeah. to get that done. Because they, it's just, it's like our crochet stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I haven't really made a, done a crochet order in, in months now. Yeah. Um, because it is time consuming and it's just not at the top of my list to do. So, yeah. Yeah. There you go. It's not, I was going to say, it's not that the materials are that expensive, except actually the leather is kind of expensive. Just the raw, yeah. untreated leather, you know, well, it's, it's, it's treated, but it's like not to make dyed. a good To make a good strap. Yeah. Be, the leather good? actually costs a lot more now than back in the day when I bought a big, big chunks of it. So the leather has gone up in price significantly. And there's reasons for that because that's... Yeah. It's just supply and demand. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be it'd be a lot, and I'm I'm just not ready at the moment to go back into making leather stuff because it's just super time consuming. That's the you know that's the thing is sometimes people think it's expensive or whatever. I'm like no no no, but punched out on a machine in China is different than hand cutting everything. Yeah, hand or even hand done and, um, and hand dyeing person. all that stuff. So yeah, yeah, it it would be it'd be a fair bit. But I can't do it right now anyways. You're like, here's the money. I'm like, I can't do it. 
yeah. at the moment. You'd so. be waiting for a long time. Yeah, be and that's not fair to yeah. the customers. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you for the question, though. I appreciate it. If I ever do put out a few more custom straps, I probably won't do custom orders. I'll probably, if I ever get around, I'll just make some. I go, mm -hmm. here's the strap. Here's what it is. You can buy it for this much. Right. Versus doing custom one-off things because you still have time. Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking, though. I appreciate it. Next question. Walking Dead 1369 mm -hmm. hashtag vitamin D. With no secret hashtag, I decided to make my own LOL. Yeah. I forgot the hashtag last week. I know. You what were we thinking? The ball. <laughs> and you let me forget. I know. Gosh, it's all my fault. <laughs> it's, no, it's mostly me. Yes. It's 90% me. I agree with that. It's 10% you. <laughs> I decided to make my own. Ryan, have you ever had an experience with BC Rich guitars? If so, what did you think? Angela, what would you suggest for a Mother's Day gift? Mm. <gasps> Mother's Day is coming up mm -hmm. for all you mothers. Mother? Um. Uh, the only experience I've had with BC Rich is they're super cheap guitars, mm -hmm. like cheapy cheap, like sub $200. Mm -hmm. And I was not impressed, obviously, because they're just, you know, it, no guitar is amazing, you know, at under 200 bucks or 150 bucks or Guitar mm -hmm. Center specials or they were just garbage, really. Mm -hmm. um, so the only BC Rich experience I've had is like with their ultra cheap stuff. Obviously, that's not that impressive. I've never played any of their, you know, five to five hundred to a thousand dollar stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's probably fine, or you know, any of their other more high end stuff. So, mm -hmm. never, never really had much experience. The only one I ever really liked the look of, because mm -hmm. most of them like it's too pointy. I mean, I like kind of pointy guitars like Flying V's and Explorers, right? But you know, BC Riches are like medieval weaponry. <laughs> But the only one I would kind of like was the Mockingbird slash played one in the You Could Be Mine video, mm -hmm. Terminator 2. Sure. And uh, I thought, that's pretty cool. I kind of like the Mockingbird, but none of the others. I was like, hmm, it's a little too aggressive. Interesting. So mm -hmm. that's my only experience with BC Rich. There you go. All right. Next question. Angela, <laughs> what would you suggest for Mother's Day gift? Uh, depends on the mother. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Is it for your mom or is it for your the mother of your children? Yeah, um, but it also depends on what she likes. Um, mm -hmm. I would say for for moms, um, it's always good. I mean, again, it depends on the mom. Some moms don't like breakfast in bed because they think there's crumbs in the bed now and I have to clean it. Right. Toast have, crumbs in the bed. With it's not moms, good. you have to always think: Will she have to clean it up later, or will it cause her more work to do later? So, if that's the case, stay away from those usually those items because if she's already having to do a lot, adding stuff to her list is not a good present. It's like pots and pans. Yeah, that you have to clean later. Well, if 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 she's if she loves to cook. And then you know that's what she just loves to do, not that she does it. That's the different, you know, her cooking and loving to cook are two different things. Cooking because you want to versus cooking because your children are wanting need to be about fed are food. two different things. So uh, I would yeah. say if she loves to cook and you see the state of her cookware and you know that blessing her with a, a new set is good then do that if she loves to garden and you're all she's out there and that's her happy place buy her something that would <clears throat> be great for a garden if she loves movies you know movie tickets and giving her like the studio movie girl type thing a night away yeah, from the nice, kids nice a night movies. with her girlfriends or a night with you if she doesn't like spending time with other girls you know ladies then uh, you know because i know i'm that way sometimes sometimes i'm like i don't want to spend time with a bunch of women i want to spend time with my husband you know so there's that um and also, she likes I museums, you know, go into museum. And now that, you know, the states are opening up, these are possibilities again for her to be able to go and do. Um, just depending on the woman, it doesn't have to necessarily be flowers unless she loves flowers. Give her flowers. Um, I personally don't like flowers in a vase. I like flowers that I could potentially plant so I can enjoy them always. I don't like things cut that I'm going to have to, again, work to clean up and throw away that that's 
adding to the, the process. I don't necessarily want chocolate or unless you take me out to dinner, then it's something I can sit and enjoy, get away from, you know what I'm saying? So this like, you have to really think about, you know, what the mom is actually going to be doing and how, how is she going to actually enjoy it? If you give her a box of chocolates, more than likely she's going to have to share them with her children. So she's not going to be able to really enjoy it. But if you take her away from the children on a weekend getaway and then give her chocolate, she will have time to actually enjoy those chocolates without a child asking, can I have some? <laughs> Your giant children's like, oh, you got chocolate? What? What's that for? It's because I'm my mom. Get away from me. You know what I'm saying? Wish so I it's had like, some chocolate. you know, you know, little things like that. Um, it's that thinking of the, the ripple effect after the gift. What is this going to cause my wife to have to do? Or is she going to actually truly be able to enjoy it? You know, no, she loves being around her kids and she has no problem with that. Um, versus she says that she has no problem with that, but really she does have a problem with that. But if she genuinely loves being around her children during times like that, then incorporate the children. You mean but if she needs a break from the children, give her a break from the children. You mean sometimes women say things they don't mean? Of course we do. So do men. What? Yeah. Never. Always. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> so, like, so women, like women are the only one who do that. Please give me a break. Stop being so ridiculous. So sexist. <laughs> Maybe they crap all you brought the time. It up. No, I'm just saying. We're talking about Mother's Day, okay. not Father's Day. Um, so with uh, with women, you have to think of what they're going to have to do afterwards. You know, is this going to have to cause my wife to do more chores, or is this going to have you know cause her more stress? You know, if she doesn't want to spend time with your mother-in-law, with your mom, husbands, then don't invite mother-in-law along to share with your wife's mother state gift. If she loves your mother-in-law and that's her mother, then she might enjoy her and the mom, mother-in-law going out and doing stuff together. You have to think about these things. Listen to what she says during the week and years, months. And then collaborate a plan according to the wife. It sounds like a lot of work, but this is what honestly a lot of women do when it comes to Father's Day. You know, we think of these things like, what is it going to, you know. You know three it, months ago really he said he wanted a new it. hammer because his other hammer was, was busted. Broken. And he or, hasn't ever got one. So. Or he wanted to, to go out to see this new movie. He's really excited about going to see this mo new movie. Or, you know, he needed new, th whatever, you know, and you plan accordingly. You know, no man has usually ever a wife cooked a meal and say, wow, that was great. And got up and, and the wife gets up and let, leaves the table and leaves the man to clean up his Father's Day dinner. But that always happens to moms. <laughs> so take you know? her out for Mother's Day. Yeah. So it's like, wow, dad made breakfast and pancakes and all this stuff. And then now there's dishes in the sink. And what happens? Mom has to clean the dishes. <laughs> On Mother's Day. So it's like, why make me breakfast if I'm going to have to clean up? I'm not speaking from experience. Much. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> but it's just those little things that most people don't think about. And it should be thought about. And that's that's my opinion. On that. There you go. There Depends you. on the person because everybody likes different stuff. Yeah. Just listen and pay attention. Just, you know... It's it's just a relationship thing, just like you did when you were dating. You know, you paid attention to the little things, you know, of what band she likes, what, you know, store she likes to shop at, give cards to those places, getting nails done, getting pedicures. If she doesn't like that, does she like getting her hair done? If she doesn't like that, you know, does she love to art, do art, crafts, crochet, knit, make blankets, whatever it is. <clears throat> does she need a new sewing machine? Does she love to run does she need new tennis shoes to run to take her to go get some new tennis shoes you know to go whatever does she work out what you know whatever it is that she does um that she enjoys to do cater to that thing there you go yeah i know what to get you i don't i'm i'm a personal like i do not like cards i don't know what to get my mom i do not like cards at all i think they're a waste of money and a waste of um time because I not only do I, it's like I'm holding like almost $8 worth of money in my hand. And now I'm going to go, what with it? Because I don't keep it. 
I don't like keeping. Well, having, how many cards can you keep? You know, right? Just, exactly. You know, it's like I just the of idea cards. of having it. Now I have to think because this is that afterthought. I now I have to think of a place where do I put this thing? Because like, how long do I keep it? Do I keep it forever? You know, because I really I have don't to keep want it long to, enough. It doesn't hurt his feelings. Like, oh, thanks for the card. Trash. What I would rather have is like a beautifully framed picture of you know me holding my baby. You know, you know, like if I got a framed picture, a beautiful frame, not a cheap Dollar Tree frame, Walmart but frame. like a beautiful framed, a purposefully according to my decor frame picture of me holding child number one and child number two, like Nicholas, and then my first moments with him, like that would be something that I would pr appreciate more than a card. Right, because the card is going to check it eventually. Eventually, it's going to get. It might be a year and from now. That's money going yeah. down the drain, and that's annoying. I just threw away a bunch of cards yesterday that were on my desk. I'm like, "What are these here?" And I'm like, "Open them." I'm like, this is like from 2017. Have <laughs> cards, like, why do I still have these? Right. Exactly. Good advice. There you go. Good advice. Thank you, Walking Dead. Yeah. Thanks. If you don't know what to get your mom, ask your wife or your girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Or your mom. Mom, what do you want? No, I don't, don't ask anything. her what you what she wants. Don't do that either. Because that's another thing. When you ask them what they want, they're like, oh, now I have to think about my own gifts. You don't know me enough to that you could just figure me out and just know what I'd like. I have to not only um, <laughs> tell you what I want, I have to actually, okay, so <laughs> you know, that's what the boys do on my birthday. Mom, what do you want to do for your birthday? I was like, I'm just going to sit here and just... Watch it happen. I'm not going to do anything. You have Man known me. Though. How many years have you known me? <laughs> you can't figure out one thing that I might possibly like for my birthday. Don't ask me to work on my birthday. Don't do that. Because <laughs> that's one thing I don't want for my birthday. Work. Is to actually try to figure out what I want for my birthday. Fix your own breakfast. <laughs> that would be great. You know. Thanks for walking. All right. <laughs> next question. Just fun guitar. Great answers, RNA. Hashtag KT May. What is the largest pet you ever owned? Does Canton have a sheriff, and did he get voted into office? Okay, mm -hmm. largest pet you've ever owned? A uh, horse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to say that. I was like, because I had a horse, but are horses larger than cows? And are cows considered pets? It depends on how you treated your cows. I guess so. Did you walk along your cow and say, good morning? And You fed them. I fed them every morning. I would say Ooh. it was depending on how many cows you had. It, what was the purpose of owning the cows? Was it just to have cows, or was to we're eat gonna them. we're gonna slaughter these things? Yeah, you're gonna eat them eventually. <laughs> you don't eat your horse. You don't eat horses. That was the thing. You you get horses. Yeah. To ride or to have. They weren't my. It wasn't my horse, but I helped take care of the horse. I groomed it. I fed it. I rode it. I rode her. I you know. I took care of her. I went out and sat with her in her stall and mm -hmm. walked her down the, you know, I every, almost every day I spent time with Asta. Asta? Mm-hmm. Because Loa was crazy. Ours, was ours, ours was named Bonita. Bonita? Bonita. She was beautiful. Mm -hmm. so she was reddish brown. Then we had a white horse that was super crazy. Yeah, Somebody Austin, gave him Austin to was us. Appaloosa. You couldn't ride the white one. It would just run in the pasture. Just like, like mm -hmm. you feed it, but like don't don't try to ride it because <laughs> he's just like wild stallion. Yeah, Lola Benita, was Benita a paint. Lola, 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 Lola was a paint, and she what two Texans' was, largest pet was horses. <laughs> How cliche. Yeah. yeah. And then I guess my second largest pet is Summer. Because I don't think I've ever had a dog as big as Summer. I don't think I ever had it either. Well, first Summer was... She was bigger than I thought, but I don't yeah. think she's as big no, as this one. No, I don't think she's as yeah. big as this one. Second largest would be our... What is she? Uh, lab slash German Shepherd mix. Yeah, mostly German Shepherd. Y'all saw her a couple videos back. Yeah, she's a giant dog. But significantly smaller than a horse. Yeah. You know, far she's second more place. like a Shetland. Yeah, it's more like a just a... A little puppy dog. Um, so yeah, largest largest pets both of us have owned separately. Mm -hmm. Separately was horses. Together it's... My dad brought home an alligator one time. But it was not a pet. No. I think he wanted it to be, though. But that's not a... He safe. brought it home on a leash. He did. 
His mouth was duct tape. Was it very big? It couldn't have been that big. It was pretty big. Like, he wasn't walking it. Yeah. He was just walking to the house. Mm-hmm. Hey, y'all got some chickens? Yeah. I'm hungry. He walked it. It walked up the steps. <laughs> and it was sitting on her on her deck. What'd your mom think about that? It was probably about three, including the tail. It was probably about so it four. Wasn't, it wasn't big. Enough. It's pretty big, though, for an alligator. It's big enough to bite your arm off. Well, that's not a, see, that's not a safe pet. For kids. I was like, come out here, girl. I got something for you. We are like, oh, my God, take out a puppy. Open the door. Ah! It's a dinosaur. <laughs> Screaming our love What is that? My mom. Bitch, you in bed. What? <laughs> what? He probably laughed. Yeah. Oh, he belly yeah. laughed. He, he got, got a good giggle. chuckle out of that one. Mm-hmm. Does Canton have a sheriff, and did he get voted into office? Why is it a heat? Girls oh, can be sheriffs. Oh. Just fun guitar. Could have been... He slash she. Man. <laughs> it is not a she, however. It is no, a he. No, it is a he. It he, is a he. It is, it is a he. He are a he. We do <laughs> have sheriff some a man, sheriff yes. deputies. There is a sheriff deputy who is a female. Yes. So there's a female sheriff, sheriff deputy. deputy here. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, I don't know how it is there. Like, the sheriff of Nottingham. Right. Yes. If you have a sheriff for your city. Here, it's for the county. So, the county is just, you know... You know, states are smaller than the country. You know, within the state, it's broken down into counties. Like, mm-hmm. I don't even know how many counties Texas has. It's a lot. I can't remember. Crap load of counties. My dad had a painting. Of- I'm a bad Texan. But how many, you know, Dallas County, yeah. Tarrant County, Hunt Smith County, County, Smith, Henderson, Guadalupe Wood. County, Wood County, right? Yeah. We're in Van Zant County. Mm-hmm. And within Van Zant County, there's four or five small towns about the size of Canton. Mm-hmm. And then a buttload of people just living out in the outside Little of the city. Little bitty, small communities. And even not communities, just like, I live out in the woods. I got 80 yeah. acres of land out here. It's just me, you know. Mm-hmm. So now the sheriff is over the entire county. Right. So the sheriff has jurisdiction in each of the small cities in the county, I guess. Mm-hmm. Well, they're actually over everything outside of the city. Yes. So the sheriff handles every stuff that's not inside of the city limits. Outside of city limits is the sheriff's domain. Because <laughs> we have city police for Canton. Mm-hmm. City police for Wills Point. City police. And police chief. Van. And there's a police chief in each little town. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the majority of the people in our county don't live inside of the small city limits. They live out in the country. And mm-hmm. so the sheriff is over that. It covers the entire county, not just our city. And yes, he slash she is elected. We just had a vote. Mm-hmm. I don't know who but won. it got suspended because it was um, it was too close. Was it? And so they had to do a yeah because we're still the process is still going. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Who was one? Uh, the guy I voted for. Did I vote? I think I voted. Mm-hmm. There was one I, I liked. Uh, Steve Hendricks. Yes. Hendricks. Because the one guy, there were several people running for sheriff. Only one of them. Actually came to my store, walked in. Hi, I'm Steve Hendricks. I'm running for sheriff. Blah let's, blah. Let's keep it. Let's keep it right about there. Uh huh. Let's keep it before we start getting ourselves in trouble. Oh, offending people. Yeah. Oh no, I'm just saying. Only one <laughs> candidate came to see me. I'm like, and he was talking. He seems like a nice guy. He's from here. I'm like, mm-hmm. I like your vote. Like, well, I'll tell you what, you're the only one to come and talk to me. Mm-hmm. Value my time. Value my business. So yeah. I'm probably going to vote for you. Right. Probably. One of the other guys was kind of interesting, a little right. colorful, but he didn't come to my shop and talk to us. Right. So there you go. Plus his last name is Hendrix. I was like, Jimmy Hendrix, are you related? I don't think he's related. I don't think so. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, our sheriffs are elected officials. Mm-hmm. And there you go. Yep. I guess ours is still up. I thought it was done, though. Uh, not that it was I... too close. Mm-hmm. Shows what I know. Well, my guy was in second place, so maybe there'll be a run. Sheriff Hendrix. Mm-hmm. Thanks for the question. Just found guitar. Next question. Jake Voss. Is that a James Hetfield sound effect? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. So, um, I've got, like, I don't know where I found it. I found some MP3 files somewhere of just these different know. James, uh, like little clips, just his voice. Mm-hmm. And I, I took all of them made like one file so I have I have multiple James Hetfield 
sound effects. Of course he does. In my editor that I'll, I'll stick into a video here or there or there. <laughs> it's great. I, I, I do need to, I thought about it. I need to make that my text alert. I need to figure out how to get that. Into, like one of them going to my phone. That's my, you got an email. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got an email. And he goes, ooh. And it's, I know it's a message yeah. from Messenger. So. Oh but yeah, <clears throat> I can't remember where I found them. And it was bad because I couldn't get them onto my phone. So I was basically holding my phone up to the computer speaker and pressing play and recording. Mm -hmm. it's, it was, it's a very ghetto way of importing the sounds. It's very 90s way, early. Like when I was a kid, you would record your favorite 90s. song on a tape player. Oh, songs on the radio, hit record. Yes. Hey. Push the two buttons, play and record. <laughs> Yeah, so it is a James sound effect. It's fun. It makes me laugh. Mm -hmm. Every time I hear it, it makes me laugh. I'm like, that's and awesome. I'm just like, yeah. And you're like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. You can find it somewhere. Just type in James Hetfield MP3 or something. I don't even know what website I found it on. but I'm sure they have it on iTunes. Oh, I'm, well, no. It was some random site. Mm -hmm. that I don't think I don't think there are iTunes. There should be, though. I, if I was him, I'd be like, all right, you can buy some sound effects from me for a buck a piece. Yeah. Why not? They sell everything else. So, mm -hmm. All right. Thanks for the question, Jake. Next question. Fat philosopher. Why do most guitar teachers teach chords before scales when scales are easier to learn, especially when someone wants to play metal? Ooh. Good question. Good question. Mm -hmm. Well... It's kind of a loaded question too because it's subjective. Mm -hmm. Like I have quite a few students who struggle with scales and like single note things mm -hmm. and they find chords to be easier. Yeah. So I mean, you're saying scales are easier to learn, but they're not necessarily easier to learn for everybody. Right. That might be easier to learn for you. Mm -hmm. You might have had an easier time with scales than you did with chords, but not everybody is like that. Right. Um, so it depends. Now, I think part of it, too, really is because if, if I could teach a 10-year-old mm -hmm. a scale, you know, like, hey, first lesson. Great, you learned a scale. Play me a song. The kids are going to be like, I, I don't know. You know, they're going to have to go home and practice. Great, they can play a scale now. Now, what song can they do with that? Mm -hmm. Nothing. But you could teach them a chord, and then one more chord, and you've got a song. Mm -hmm. There's a two chord song. Don't get demonetized. Or, if they're country fans, uh, uh. don't hit me in the face. I'm trying not to. I'm gonna to. smack you. <laughs> I'm trying not to. Hit you back. If you have an A chord and a D chord, literally just two chords. I put some extras in there, but there's a pretty big, famous country song for that country. It's literally two chords. There's an old, uh, what's his name? Merle, was it Merle Haggard? I don't know. There's another old. Mm -hmm. uh, we learned it recently. Is it Rainy Day Woman? Rainy Day Woman. That's another mm -hmm. one. Literally just two chords. I'm yawning. I apologize. Sleepy? Yes. <laughs> Late night? Or early oh, morning? I'm just anticipating of a long day. <laughs> this is the beginning. It's Thursday morning right now. <laughs> well, it's 10.30. <clears throat> so anyways, with... There are uh, some immediate songs you can play with chords, even with just two chords, mm -hmm. that you can play pretty quickly. Like, oh, this sounds like the song, you know. Mm -hmm. And with you know, with doing scales, you can't immediately play something super recognizable. Right. So, right. I think that's why most people start with chords. Yeah. And because most, let's say that if you, if you're not a metal person and you're right. not into playing a lot of riffs, which that is not the majority of our students, honestly. There's a couple of them who are like, 
can you play can we play some Metallica? Can we play some mm -hmm. you know what let's mm -hmm. kind of saying can we play some Led Zeppelin? Yes, there's some riffs, single note riffs. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them wanted to play songs that are more strummy, strummy chord songs. Yeah, the majority of the kids want to learn strummy, strummy chord songs. And then they do. We might have like three kids out of almost 60 students that want to learn Metallica shreddy stuff. And the rest of them just want to just play Chugga Chugga, you know, George Strait, mm -hmm. you know, just country music, worship songs that they can immediately play and they can stand in front of their youth group or they can sit with dad because that's all dad knows and they can play along with dad and they don't want to be up there, you know, playing you know, whatever, Fiddly diddly whatever, stuff. whatever, John Petrucci, whatever <laughs> type stuff, you know, no one wants, John, to... fake beard Petrucci, <laughs> fake die, uh, fake news, um, <laughs> so I, you know, I agree with Ryan 100%, I, whenever I tell kids, you know, that you're learning this because we do have lessons in our curriculum that aid to the, um, the lay the foundation of learning what the like feedly deedly stuff weedly deedly stuff weedly and then a lot of the kids and i can see it on their faces because i have the same mentality because i'm not that kind i don't want to learn that kind of stuff that they're like well that's not what i want to learn so why am i learning it mm -hmm. you know so i like at the very beginning when i noticed that mentality like that thought pattern i'm like okay what's your favorite song and most of the time they'll say a song that's very very easy it has just like G, C, E minor, D in it. And we look it up and literally like every line is just one chord song. Mm -hmm. And we learn it and they feel accomplished. They're like, I, I did that. I'm like, yeah. And, but if I threw something, even like uh, Stairway, they're like. Uh, right. Uh, because they don't, you know, they're not there yet. And they might eventually be there, and that's fine, because their love of music will grow and bloom. But to start off with chords, for most kids, they want that instant satisfaction because they get that all the time with everything else. So um, to help them continue fan the flame of their love for music, teaching them chords is the groundwork. It's just like teaching a kid, not that chords are this simple, but... It's like starting off with singing the alphabet. Singing the alphabet get starts, ignites their love for reading because they've already associated it with music and something fun. Mm -hmm. So you want to do that when you're teaching kids music um, because they're not going to sit down like as a piano player and play Chopin. They're not going to do that. They're one, immediately. They they want to they want to start off some, with something that they can actually kind of feel accomplished and, and mm -hmm. do. Now we actually do start off with some single note stuff, like mm -hmm. lesson number one, like never play guitar in your life, lesson number one. We do come in and we don't start with chords immediately. No, we don't. We start with like, can you hold down one string with one finger, mm -hmm. one fret, mm -hmm. right? Because if you have a lot of people, beginners. Yeah, it's hard. No, you gotta pinch harder, pinch harder, pinch harder. Oh my gosh, it hurts. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it does. Yeah. It's going to. But getting them to get a single good note mm -hmm. with one finger on one string, mm -hmm. that's mechanically, that's easier than doing, you know, doing a big, trying to do that. And right. we start off, and it is using part of a scale. We try to get them to play a recognizable melody on just two strings. Just on two strings, mm -hmm. first finger, third finger, first fret, third fret, and opens. Mm -hmm. So that it is like, I've heard this. Yeah. I've, this I, is I something this I've song. recognized. Yeah. And like, I'm, I'm playing it. And it's yes. to mechanically get them used to, this is what it feels like to press down a string with one finger. Mm -hmm. And we do start there. But even then we do, when we get to chords, which is not too many lessons after that, we start with just partial chords, three strings, mm -hmm. playing a chord on three strings easy like we build into it mm -hmm. so we do mix like our our particular system we mix i call it single note playing playing melodies single mm -hmm. notes one note at a time yeah or chord chord style things mm -hmm. and that's all you ever really do on guitar you're either playing chords 
or you're playing melodies. Mm -hmm. That's the only two things there are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we kind of mix those things together because um, I do feel like there are a lot of guitar players you talk about. Like guys like, I can strum my chords, but I don't know any scales or I can't play any solos or I can't play them. Like, it's because you never practiced it. Right. And it is, for most people, it is harder to play single note riffy things. It's harder than holding down a chord static and right hand just strumming. Right, right. So, uh, but we do mix those things together. And even if the kids aren't like super excited about the single note stuff, I'm like, yeah, but you need to know this. Right. Because you know? if you can't do, if you can't play your one and three finger on fret two and four, or later on on six and nine, or whatever, six and eight, whenever, if you're doing that, if you can't do that, then whenever you play a D chord, getting your fingers to do something that is not used to doing. That's what I was telling mm -hmm. one of the students yesterday. It's like, I'm trying to condition your brain to think differently because first of all, you're right-handed and the easy part you're doing with your right hand and the more complicated part you're doing with your left hand, well, you're left, you're, you're not left strength. You you're don't have that strength. And that, right. Yes. So you have to reprogram your brain to think that I can do something different with my left hand. I can be almost ambidextrous with with my with my motor skills. And it's like so this is why I'm teaching you this so that whenever you move up and down and change quickly in a chord, you won't it won't be your brain going, "No, that's not right. <laughs> Don't do that." Is that pause that we have as our brain saying, "No, that doesn't feel right." And then you have to think and say, "No, this is how it is." You don't verbally and mentally actually think that but you are thinking that by the motions that you're making with your hand not wanting to go where it needs to go because your brain's like ah, this doesn't feel right so teaching them that and and telling him that whenever i told him that he was like oh, okay and so because he understood that just like whenever you were a little kid and you had to learn how to not color like this with your crayon but actually hold the crayon a certain way and you had to over and over do that so whenever you now pick up a pencil or pick up a pen you automatically hold it the right way and you write from left to right you don't write from right to left or up and down and you write exactly the way your brain was told how to do your it brain was wired. even though that's not a natural function you had to wire it a certain way and build it that way and whenever I tell them that, they're like, oh, okay, I get it now. And it doesn't seem so frustrating as, fr as frustrating well, they when they don't get their sound. why it's difficult. This right. is why this is difficult. This is why. And this is why it's necessary to have this building block. And this is why we do this. So now, see how now it's easier to make that chord because you practiced doing something that you not normally, you don't normally do. Yeah. Practicing the single note stuff and scales gives you more independent dexterity in these fingers. Mm -hmm. which can make the, the cording stuff even easier because you've got, mm -hmm. you're really developing the independent control. But it tends, it, I would say for the majority of our students, it's more challenging to do that than it is to do the chord shapes. Mm -hmm. Now, not for me at this point, I've been, but I've been playing for forever. And like, right. it, it's, chords are easy peasy. But as someone um, who hasn't, I see it as a, a necessary because mm -hmm. whenever I do those... It's like doing burpees. Those, Nobody yes. wants to do burpees. But whenever, you know, you're down on the ground and you're getting up off the ground, like if you're sitting crisscross, leg, leg crisscross, then getting up off the ground will be easy because you've already conditioned yourself to do something ridiculous that you would never do. <laughs> and now you're able to get up off the ground as, instead of looking like a 100-year-old person. Now you're able to have the core strength to be able to get up off the ground without needing someone to give you a hand. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they're both important. Uh, yeah. And, and not that one is more important than the other. No, they're both no, like no, equally no, no. important. But that's how but most people tend to be guitar teachers. People tend to be lopsided. Yes. They'll go in the ditch on either way. I had a friend be balanced. who could play the crap out of all these solos. You could play Van Andy Van Halen, Eruption, blah, 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 all this little stuff. He's like, hey play a B minor seven. And he's like, hmm? He sucked at chords, but he could play. I'm like, how can you play all this really awesome and yeah. not like play these basic chords? Mm -hmm. So you can get in a ditch on, on either side of that. So yeah. great question. Interesting question. Um, mm -hmm. It's interesting. I, I have not found because I have a lot of friends who are guitar teachers and I'm trying to find like a codified system for learning guitar. Mm -hmm. And there's really not like for piano, for violin, 
or percussion, like if you're classically trained, like going to university and type, there's pretty recognized system for this is how you learn this instrument. Mm -hmm. Uh, like learning math, I'm like okay, we start with this, we start with this, we build this, 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 and you at this certain point, you're expected to know how to do this in math. You're expected to know how to do this in language. You're expected mm -hmm. to know how to do this in writing. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a a system, a loose system in place. There seems to not be one for guitar, and every guitar teacher does it kind of different. And so I like it's really it's really a weird thing. I would I would like to find. I'm always trying to refine what is the better way to teach. You know, and you find what someone else is doing and it works for them, works for their students, but it may not work for you. And then they're doing something completely different than this person over here. Mm -hmm. It's a really odd thing. But anyways, great question. I appreciate it. Next question. Mm -hmm. Bubba Fang. Question. Is it better to rewire your guitar when you switch it to active from passive, Ryan? And both did either of you teach songs that personally you never thought you'd ever play, let alone teach? <laughs> he said something about teaching a Justin Bieber song too. Oh, okay. <laughs> the kid, yes. he was like, I would not ever do that, but the kid wanted to learn it. Yeah. Um, rewire, yeah, when you're going from active to, active to passive, you usually do have to completely rewire it because mm -hmm. you're going, you're using, usually using different sets of pots and uh, your, your input jack is, is different when you're going from passive to active. So you generally have to gut the whole thing and completely, re completely rewire it. That's one of the things I like about EMG. Is their stuff because it's mostly solderless. You can just plug and play. You can just take all the old stuff out, put in the EMG pots, the EMG input jack, just plug, beep, 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 plug it all up. Um, you used to have to, if you get their toggle switch, it, it's also plug and play. But the only thing we ever, I ever had to solder was the, the the toggle switch, the pickup selector. Everything else was just easy peasy. But you do generally have to completely switch out all your wiring. Mm -hmm. Which is why I like to I have my guitars that are active, I have my guitars that are passive, and I don't really, you know, I have some of each. So, mm -hmm. ever teach a song that you personally never thought you'd ever play, let alone teach? Uh, play, um, probably most Metallica songs. Um, we have a little kid right now. Who's been sevenfold. Really into Def Leppard. Yeah, I never listened to Def Leppard. Um, we're learning Hysteria. Um, never heard the song. <laughs> I never had. I wore that tape out. Never. Summer of '88. Honestly, I, whenever it was playing, I was like, "This seems vaguely familiar," but it wasn't like, "Yeah, I know." But it was so easy to catch on singing it because it's such a simple lyrically simple because it just repeats itself like over and over again and the music pretty much repeats itself over and over yeah. again so it's a with a simplified version not all the weedly deedlies the overlays right, and all right, that right. stuff is happening because there's a lot of music there's happening. a lot of production going yes, on in the a lot um so it's very you know kindergarten down to just basic strumming patterns you know acoustic because he's playing an acoustic yeah, an acoustic and, but he uh, recognizes it as, is this a song? Yes, is this a song? And you can hear it when he's playing it, and you can easily sing along with him yeah. whenever he's playing it. But yeah, I would say Def Leppard's Hysteria. <laughs> I had that tape when it first came out, mm -hmm. and I went and like stayed for a week in uh, New Braunfels with my cousins Yeah, for a week, and we just built models, like little tanks and, mm -hmm. and stuff, built models and listened to that tape over and over, like take it out, flip it over. Because it, it didn't automatically flip. You had to eject it, flip it over, put it back of in. Of course, of course. That's like cool. for an entire week, all day, we just listened to that one Def Leppard tape. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I know. Now, I haven't listened to it very much probably since then. Right. <laughs> or since I was in high school. But mm -hmm. I was like, I know those songs. So when he started playing, I was like, oh, I know that. Mm -hmm. I've never had a student want to learn Def Leppard. Yeah. <laughs> so <it's>, uh, <laughs> he is that kind of kid. He he doesn't like heavy metal. He just likes like eighties hair metal. rock. Yeah, that's what he likes, and he I mean, he loves it. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with liking There's what he likes. There's a couple like. other ones that he wants to learn. He wants to learn. Um, Never want to give you up, which I thought was hilarious. And uh, he's like, my parents don't want me listening to this. Rick rolled. <laughs> 
funny. He's he's a cutie. Anyways, but yeah, I was like, okay, uh, sure, <laughs> we'll sing this. Um, but yeah. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of what mine is. Uh, I have a couple of kiddos who really are into the country music. Nobody's here. Even though it's 10.50. All right. Uh, sorry. <laughs> We're not open, but people are knocking on the door. Oh, <laughs> Unrelated to art and music. Yes. Other, other things. Yes. Uh, um, stuff things. Stuff things. So I got a couple of kiddos who are into the country music, particularly. Yeah. Probably the first one that I never thought I would learn to play was... Oh, sorry. Out of the shot. Mm -hmm. How about that? Close, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boys round here. Yeah. Uh, Blake Shelton. Yeah. <sighs> That's hilarious. We haven't sang that. We haven't performed that at a recital. We have not performed I that. I don't think we probably will. No. Because I don't mm -hmm. like the lyrics. I don't so. either. <laughs> it's very vapid. I'd rather, I'd rather sing some, you know. I'd rather sing George Strait. Yeah. Oh, we've done that. Yes. We did. What was and the George Strait Allie song? Sing, playing I Cross My Heart. Yeah. yeah, I loved that song in junior high. I loved that song. What was the one I just taught little Maddie? The, the last one. It was hers. Was a George Strait song, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I can't remember what it was. Oh gosh, yeah, they had a quite a few good, good country, yeah. country songs. So and, and like right now, I'm teaching this brother and sister, the ones who are both in the country. We're working on my homes in Alabama, mm -hmm. or my hearts in Alabama. No, my home's in Alabama, mm -hmm. by Alabama, <laughs> by the band, Yes, Alabama. My dad loved, loves, loved, but as a kid, we always listened to Alabama. I think we had like two of their oh records. Oh my God, we had some. Like records. And I, like. And I remember the cover of the records, like, yeah, and the band. I don't, I don't remember. There I was, thought the lead singer, the guy with the dark hair and the dark mustache was so cute. <laughs> the guys of Alabama were like just so cute and I was like you know, we would watch the country music awards and stuff growing up and they were like Alabama and we were like that and the winner is Alabama and they all come up there with their feathered hair and stuff <laughs> drinking oh wait drinking that and was over. written in my uh, oh. okay monetize crap forgot the second chord anyways <laughs> Alabama actually and the Oak Ridge Boys Oak Ridge Boys I remember that there were, what, was, there were, what was, uh, oh, that was the one. What was Alabama's big hit? Like, big, big hit. Because oh, I never heard My yeah. Home's in Alabama until they're like, can we learn My Home's in Alabama? I'm like, I guess. I wouldn't have known if I could have said. i tell you what, though. I'm going to have to Google it. I have enjoyed, I know what it is, but I can't I have enjoyed teaching that song to these kids. Because mm -hmm. it's absolutely not something I would have picked myself to learn to play. No, not at all. And, uh... It's actually really good because there's little lead breaks at the very beginning of the song, a little lead guitar thing in the, in the beginning. There's a little mm -hmm. lead thing in the middle and a little lead thing at the end of the song, which are actually great things for these kids to work on because they're not really lead players per se, and it's a fairly fairly basic lead parts. It's not like insanity, like heavy metal, you know, kind of stuff. <clears throat> Man, they go way back. It's, it's kind of like some basic stuff. Pentatonic, you know, kind of blues licks essentially, but in a country context, it's great for them to learn some bendy licks and some slides and stuff. So I've been having fun teaching it to them. And like analyzing the song is really interesting. If you're going to play in Texas. What? If you're going to play in Texas. Oh, is that the name of the song? You gotta have a fiddle in the band. Oh. You remember that song? No. If you're no. going to play in Texas, you gotta have a fiddle in the band. That's probably true. I love it. I would think there would be right. Alabama. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so that's one right now <laughs> that I'm like, I never, never thought I would. Mm -hmm. Alabama's not on my radar to, like, I don't listen to them. Right. Listen to them when I was a kid because that's what was on the radio. And that's mm -hmm. what the parent, my parents would oh my play. Oh, yeah. We, my dad listened So I knew who them. they were, but it wasn't yeah. like, you know. We had that album know. cover, Mountain Music. Yeah. Mountain Music. Mm -hmm. That's the one. Mm -hmm. That's the one I, I heard. So. Yeah. It's interesting me for for me to teach these country tunes because a lot of them I'm like oh I vaguely remember that mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. This, these are like kids, like 12 and 13 year olds in the year 2020. You're like, can we learn to have a Bama song? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, good. it's good music. I mean, because it's not <clears throat> raunchy. Yeah. I'll know? say this. Uh, that is more so. It is a more sophisticated song musically than the bro country stuff right now. I believe it's got it. A minor seven to D, D major seven. Mm-hmm. It does. It's got these really interesting. Um, we can go. play some Randy Travis. Yeah, let's play Randy some Randy Travis. Because it, you know, he's not just doing your Randy basic. There, I mean, that's their D chord, okay, mm-hmm. generic country chord. The D7 this is a little walk down. So I'm like, yeah, that's cool. And it's making them work on. I cross my heart has some complicated tra- transitions because yeah. almost like every single word tran- transitions into a note. Mm-hmm. And Ali was like, Do I have to play all those? Notes? Well, if you <laughs> want to play the song, she goes, this is a lot harder than. Um, Wagon uh, wheel. Love it. What is it? That's what I love about Sundays. The other guy, oh, the yeah, newer yeah. guy, because he's like bro country. Bro country. This is just a G, C, E minor, D over and over again. Yeah. But like George Strait has like D sevens and yeah. uh, like C, you know, D uh, major like, sevens. D major sevens. And know. I liked all kinds of stuff. She's like, do I have to play F-sharp that? Minor seven first, yeah. yeah, so yeah, the natural. All right, yeah. She was like, do I have to? I was like, no, we're going to just. Keep it simple. We're just gonna keep. Okay. It's funny because it's I, I've used I use this example with my kiddos because then you got Blake Shelton over here. Boom. go A chord to a D chord, like literally just A to D. That's it. A to D. A to D. That's the whole dang song. That's mm-hmm. it. Super easy. Then you got Alabama with like we got D, D major seven, D minor, which is like you don't, you know, or D seven. Like you have chords that like. A minor sevens, like these don't normally go together. They're doing some a little bit more sophisticated harmony mm-hmm. musically. So I'm like, I've used that to teach the kids, like, we're getting dumber. Mm-hmm. Like, music, and Rick Beato has done some videos about this. It's like, we've dumbed down music. Like, in the mm-hmm. 60s and 70s, music was more sophisticated mm-hmm. and more interesting chord voicings and more yeah. experimental jazz things. Mm-hmm. And, and then as we got further and further along, it's gotten more G, C, D. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now it's just like G and D. Cold beer, pick up truck, 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 pick Cold beer, pick up truck, skipping Rick, uh, skipping rocks, skipping Ricks, skipping Ricks in the water. <laughs> Rick and Rick. Rick and Rick and Rick. I've heard it both ways. Hurdy dirt. You write a song called Hurdy Dirt. Yeah. But if you go back in time a little bit, the country music was a little more sophisticated. Little and and I've, I really have enjoyed kind of breaking down the song for these kids and like, oh man, they're, this is great because I've been trying to expand their chord knowledge beyond just. G, C, D, E minor, A minor, your basic major minor chords. We've already been working on that. And then they picked a song. They didn't even know. I'm like, oh, this is great. Because now we're getting mm-hmm. some major sevens. We're getting some minor sevens. We're getting a mm-hmm. little more out there with our chord, our chord vocabulary. So, right, right. So that's been great. Yeah. But, and we're probably going to perform it <laughs> at a mm-hmm. recital, which will be weird. Yeah. But hey, whatever. All right. Thanks for the question, Bubba Fang. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. <laughs> Now you're like, Ryan, I want you to play some Alabama. Mm-hmm. We're in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Next question and final question. Yay! Hey, James Harrell, hashtag vitamin D. <laughs> you guys are so great. Y'all are on top of it last week. Uh, I think Walking Walk Dead came up with it. Mm-hmm. I might have credited someone else because I saw their comment first. Walking Dead, hashtag vitamin D from last week's video. What do you do when you want new gear, but you know you already have everything you need? AKA, what is your cure for gas? What do you do when you want new gear, but you oh, know you already have everything you need? You buy it anyways. <laughs> cure for gas? Mm-hmm. There's no, that's like, is there a cure for death? Have we cured <laughs> death yet? No? Okay. So there's no uh, cure for embrace gas. Embrace it. That's your cure. Embrace the gas. <laughs> if embrace I really want to. 
and let it rip. If I really want to stop myself from buying something, I'll just mm -hmm. go, hey, honey, <laughs> look at this guitar I found. What do you think? And she's like, are you kidding me? Do not. <laughs> she's just like, yeah, what about this? Uh, Do not. What about this uh, credit card bill we got to pay? I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Probably shouldn't what buy this new guitar. Yeah, exactly. Or like, hey, you know, our dryer is nearly dead. I sure would like Quite a new dryer. Quite nearly dead. We need a new dryer. Like, we literally. Every so often, I really would like a new dryer. You know what would like, be great? Pretty much every a other, new dryer. Because pretty much every <laughs> other day, pretty much every other day, we're having to use the dryer for laundry. Something like that. And. You know, there's only one of them versus like how many guitars do you have? Like if we had 15 dryers, I'm like, ah, just use a different dryer. I got yeah, 15 just, of them. What's the big deal? Unwrap that one in the back and just go throw grab, that one out. And go grab that other go, dryer. There's go. 10 of them in the garage. Just whatever. Right. So, you know. <laughs> Which, you know, dryers are actually cheaper than guitars. <laughs> you know, they, are. they can be. Mm -hmm. They can be. That's one way to think about it. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't think there's a cure. I think there's a lack of funds. That's the really cure. It's like, go look at your bank account. Yeah. And if your bank account says, no, you can't buy that right now, then don't buy it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if your bank account says, I'm flush with cash. Yes. If you got plenty of money in your bank account and it's not going to impact your daily life, go buy it. Is gas tooting or is gas something else? It's gear acquisition syndrome. Oh, I thought he was talking about farts. Actual methane. Oh no, it's it's an I was acronym. I saying embrace it. <laughs> it's an acronym for gear. Like you know, hey, hey, I just bought this I know guitar. an acronym. I love it so much. I've been staring at it for like. You see six the acronym months. that uh, Brooklyn put on Facebook? She was like, has this black woman going like that, and it has like this really long all these letters, and they're like, if you don't know what this means, you were never you weren't raised right. Mm -hmm. and it was like, get yo. <laughs> in this path, or I will be <laughs> like all the letters in this <laughs> I was like I know, ex yo I know exactly what that says I knew ex I did not have to think about it I read it exactly what it I was like Lord have mercy I guess I was raised right you were raised right mm -hmm. like hi I've been staring at this guitar but for six that months. I did, that I didn't get <laughs> I've, been, I've been staring at this guitar for six months Finally bought it. Oh, I love it so much. I've had it for two weeks now. I'm like, oh, there's another guitar over there. Yes. That oh, one gets put on a shelf, it's and like, then that one never yeah. that one never gets played, but maybe once in the blue moon. And now he's over at that one, and he gets that one, plays it as soon as he gets it, maybe plays it for a week or so, and then he puts it down because there's another one over there. It's like a conveyor belt. It's, it's more like, as, as, as opposed to gas, it's more like hunger. It is for because it's, it's a stinky, stinky thing. It's more like hunger. Like, hey, I'm really hungry. I'm going to eat this beautiful steak. I'm like, oh, man, I'm so, I'm so full. Mm -hmm. I'm so satiated. Satiated with the steak. <laughs> but tomorrow I'm going to be hungry again. Satisfied. Now yes. I'm satisfied for a little while with this Had new guitar. a little guitar gas. Spot. <laughs> and now yeah. you're ready for it. It'll pass. But I'm That's hungry what I'm again. Saying. What is the cure for gas? It'll pass. Pass that gas. Pass that gas. <laughs> Pass the gas. I don't know. I don't think there is one because I'm definitely guilty of this. Uh, like, I've gotten new guitars. Like, I get in and go, this is cool. I'm so excited for like a week. And then I'm like, mm -hmm. I want more. <laughs> it's like being like addicted to crack, I guess. New new guitars, new gear. Um, now, I think you can mitigate it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what? I really want this guitar. But what if I get this pedal? This pedal is only like 70 bucks. The guitar I want is seven hundred dollars. I can't do that right now. Like, I can I can afford seventy bucks. Give me a delay pedal or something. I don't actually. I don't do that because I don't have that many pedals. No, you but don't. You just buy the guitar. I just buy the guitar. I don't think there is. What am I getting for Mother's Day? Uh, an ice cream, <laughs> an ice cream thing, and a trip out of town. Mm -hmm. I had an Instapot if Nicholas was paying attention. Yeah. See, now I feel bad while you're explaining that. It's like, wait, you want an ice cream maker. But that means that's a gift that you're going to have to do work. But it's ice cream. <laughs> it's worth it. Mm -hmm. See, there's always addendums. It's like, if you want it. If she wants it, that's why she gets it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if I fits, I sit. If I fits, I sit. So, I don't have a cure for gas. Mm -hmm. I am... 
addicted still. Now, I have bought guitars. I will say this. I have bought some guitars that I thought I was going to love, mm-hmm. and then I didn't, and then I sold them. Mm-hmm. So I actually have parted ways with a few guitars. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you can always... A few. A few. A couple. Some. Like maybe one. Well, I used to say I'll never part with them ever. I'm just going to keep them. Because mm-hmm. I don't want to have regrets later on. Like, regrets? Uh, re- regrets. No, regrets. Mm-hmm. I used to not... Because I I have sold the guitars that I absolutely regretted. Mm-hmm. Like, from when I was younger. Like, God, I was so stupid. Why did I do that? And then I have that one. I have no idea what happened to it. I had that yeah. black Epiphone Les Paul. That was super mm-hmm. awesome. No idea where it happened to it. Right. I, probably, I must have traded it. But I have no idea. I don't know. Uh, but I have had a few. And, you know... That's one thing. If you do get some gear and like, yeah, the honeymoon's over, uh-huh. and now you're arguing with it and you don't love it as much, you can sell right. it. Right, right. So, but as far as a cure, I don't think I have not discovered a cure yet. I have discovered delaying it because <laughs> there's no money for Pumping it. Pumping them brakes. Mm-hmm. But I uh, have not cured it yet. Mm. So there you go. <laughs> there is no cure for gas. Yeah. There's only delaying the inevitable. Mm-hmm. Like there's no cure for death. Mm-hmm. Everybody's gonna die eventually. At right. some point. So just give in to the gas. <laughs> and that's the last question. Yay! All right. So excited. Yay. Woo! Um, all right. So if you have a question or comment for next week, please type it below in the comment section of this video. Now I'm going to remember the secret hashtag of the day. Okay. So we have good. a secret hashtag of the day. If you watch this video from beginning to end, the whole thing, you are super awesome. And our secret hashtag of the day, type that in with your question or your comment, and we will know that you watched the whole video. Now, if you didn't watch the whole video, don't type it. And it's fine. We still like you. Thank you for watching whatever you watched. But if you watched the whole thing, you're super awesome. Mm-hmm. And what should our hashtag any word that jumped out at you in this whole... Other than gas? Hashtag gas. <laughs> How about hashtag lots of gas? Yes. Or I think we've had that before. Have we? Yeah. That sounds familiar. I don't remember. Uh, I was thinking of hashtag Alabama, but... <laughs> mm, I don't like that. Oh, poor Alabama. Well? Yeah, hashtag gas is fine. Hashtag gas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hashtag gas. If you watch this whole video from beginning to end... Thank you so much, and we'll know you watched it. And that is it for today. We got stuff we got to do. Mm-hmm. It is 11 p.m. Thursday morning, right before the shop opens. Yes. I'm waiting for a shipment of guitars. I'm so excited. So excited. I have guitars coming today. Can't wait. We'll do unboxings and all that good stuff. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. And we'll see you in the next video. Until then, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. Music needs you. And you need the music. And we need to keep it alive for the next generation who wants to learn Alabama songs. At least I'm learning Alabama songs and not right. Florida, it's funny Georgia that line, Leonard it... Skinner sings Sweet Home Alabama and not right. Alabama. Yeah, Alabama. They missed out on that one. They sure did. Is it Florida, Georgia line or Georgia, Florida line or I don't Florida really something? Care. Florida man goes to Georgia and sings country. Mm-hmm. Terrible stuff. Boots with the fur. <laughs> Boots with the fur. Usher is more country than Georgia, <laughs> Florida line. Florida, Georgia. I don't know. All right, we got to go. We'll see y'all later. Bye. Bye. Who's texting you? Student. Who? Student. Shh.